Hey, how's everybody doing today? I'm Anthony from The Basement Reef, and today we're here at the UPS store. I'm going to do a little unboxing video for you guys today because we have a really, really awesome shipment of saltwater stuff coming in today that has a handful of stuff that you don't usually see. Uh, I have no idea whether they're going to let me record here in the UPS place, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and try. So let's head on in and see what happens. Yeah, these ones are Awesome. Thank you, man. So we've got them all loaded up in the car and we're heading back to the shop. Uh, looks like everything shipped all right from the outside. No water on the outside of the boxes or anything. They're not banged up. Uh, so hopefully everything's gonna be good. I'm really excited to show you guys what's actually in the boxes. Well, here's something that's never fun to walk into in a fish store, but happens sometimes. And that's water on the floor. Uh, luckily we got stuff to get this cleaned up and it's not that bad. It looks like probably just a couple of gallons. But essentially what happened here is a power head and our frag tank fell off and tipped up and I think it's been putting some water on the floor all night. Uh, so we'll get this cleaned up and then get straight to the unboxing. All right, now that we're back at the store and that we've got the mess cleaned up, well, we've got the boxes inside and the first thing that we need to do is just cut them open and make sure that everything arrived alive. Uh, this is a box from Sea Dwelling Creatures. Uh, this is who we get the most of our fish from on the saltwater side of things. They always do a really good job packing, so I'd actually be pretty shocked if we have any problems here. Okay, so box number one. It's looking pretty good. No obvious problems here. Everything I can see off the glance is swimming around. The temperature's not too hot, not too warm. No bags and puncture, so that's really good. Moving along to box number two. Yep, everything in here looks really, really good too. I'm seeing some of the things that I was excited to show you guys. Next up, we're gonna uh, simply start pulling some of this stuff out and loading it. This bag right here is the thing that I'm most excited to show you guys today. So we're gonna keep it kind of hidden, set it off to the side. This bag has a huge, about six inch maximum clam in it. Uh, this is a what you see is what you get item, meaning that uh, I purchased the exact clam that I saw a picture of. I know that this guy is going to be really, really cool when we get him in and open for you guys. Dog face puffer, they're always super neat. This one's actually going to a tank that we take care of. Again, I'm just simply going to float that guy here. So with the saltwater fish, most of the time I simply float them for about five or ten minutes, let the temperatures match up, and then I'm going to pour them through a net. And this here is the other really special fish in this order that will be awesome to get a look at when he's out. And this is a uh, white tail yellow eye tang. Uh, they look just like yellow eye coal tangs, except they come from a little bit different region. And they have a stark white tail. There's really not another fish quite like it. Uh, so again, those guys just great and I'm excited to show them to you. Uh, same deal, just going to float him. Now, off camera, I'm going to float the rest of this stuff and then we'll get to popping some of the cool stuff open. Alright, now that everything is out of the box and floating in the tanks, and it's been doing so for about 10 to 20 minutes, uh, temperature should be matched up and it's time to start letting some things out. Uh, again, the way we do that is we take a net and a bucket and we're going to pour the fish through the net, just so that we're not putting any of the shipping water in there. Uh, that's for a couple of reasons. One, if there's any sort of pathogens or pests in the water from where they came from, we don't want to move that into our tanks. And the other thing is that these fish have been in these bags for about 16 hours at this point, and so they're filled with plenty of fish waste, and we don't want to go 
putting that fish waste into our systems. Cleaner shrimp's pretty hardy. I don't usually drip acclimate those guys, uh, but some other puffier shrimp, like when I have fire shrimp and things like that in the store, uh, we absolutely drip acclimate those. That would be some of the exceptions to my acclimation method. Uh, this one here, too, is another one that is an exception. Uh, this is a multicolored pygmy angel. Uh, these guys tend to be way on the sensitive side, not like other citric pie. Uh, Coral Beauty, uh, you can throw them from one tank to another and they don't even flinch. But these guys, while beautiful, uh, you got to give them a little bit more care. So we'll get him to back I mean, he'll probably be the very, very last fish that we let out. So again, we're just going to let out a few more of these guys. And I'm going to finish up off camera and we'll get a look at some of this stuff and then get to the uh, main events, if you will. That being the Maxima Clam and that secret bag that I set off to the side. Now that we've let some of the more interesting fish out of the bags, let's take a look at what we got. This here is that tang I was talking about. Again, this is a white tail, yellow eye, bristle tooth tang. Uh, almost identical to a coal tang with the exception of that stark white tail, but it absolutely changes the look of this fish. Again, I can't think of another saltwater fish at all that has this, this coloration even remotely. So if you're after, you know, an absolute showpiece tang, this guy is it. And the other awesome thing is that he doesn't need all that large of a tank. He's not going to be one of these large tanks that needs a 300 gallon tank in the future because he's 18 inches long. Uh, he's going to get maybe double the size he is now and he'll be right at home in like a 90 gallon. Uh, so if, again, you want something that you don't usually see, come in and check this guy out. This tank has the dog face puffer that we're going to be bringing over to a client's tank. Uh, we're going to watch him for a little bit first and make sure that he's not bringing any diseases into the tank because again that's a show tank they have lots of nice fish and we don't want to ruin it by bringing one fish over uh, so we'll kind of quarantine this guy in the store for a bit get him eating make sure that everything's great and then this will be an awesome awesome personable fish for their display the last fish we're going to be looking at today is this bella goby these guys again are incredibly rare uh, not as rare as say that white tail tang but still it's not every week that these come available and what they are is a sand sifting goby uh, related to your diamond gobies, your golden headed gobies, all those sleeper gobies. Uh, you can see it looks a lot like the golden head except instead of a dull drab white on the back, uh, it is a stark pink. And again, in the right lighting and mature specimens that can darken up almost into like a maroon. Uh, and we actually have two of these guys in. One is for sale. Uh, you guys are gonna be able to get him if you want. Uh, the other one though is still floating in a bag up here. And that's going to yet another tank that we take care of. Uh, usually we quarantine fish before we bring them over to our clients, but these uh, sleeper gobies are one exception, and that is because they really don't quarantine well. Uh, they need a sand bottom, which we don't usually keep in our quarantine tanks. Uh, they can be kind of sensitive to medications, and because they're sand sifters and they get almost all of their nutrition from having a mature established tank to sift through the sand, uh, they tend to starve to death in quarantine. On top of that, being a goby, they really don't bring ick in too often or anything, so that's a fish that best practice is to go straight into the tank. Uh, same deal with uh, mandarin that we have floating in another tank for the same client. Those are the two fish that I will never quarantine and always go straight into tanks, are sleeper gobies and mandarins for very similar reasons. So clams are one more thing that I always drip acclimate. We did that off camera, and we also put clams in a little bowl of sand every time we get them into the store. And the reason for that is that they have a little foot built of soft filaments that they use to anchor themselves. And if you sever that foot, it can be really, really bad for the health of the clam. Uh, with larger clams like this one, they honestly can rely on the weight to weigh them down and the foot's not as important. But still, we don't wanna damage that. We wanna get it to you with the foot intact. So that's why we do this. Now let's take a quick look at this one. It's not all the way open yet because we just got him into the tank but you can already tell that it's gonna be absolutely stunning. Just incredible turquoise and blue colors turning into almost a purple towards the edge. Uh, from the picture of this thing, you can I know that it gets all the way down to an incredibly light blue in the middle, 
just the whole, whole gradient of blue spectrums on this Maxima clam. And we're gonna take a video later when it's fully open and splice that onto the end of this video today so that you guys can see exactly how incredible that this thing is. Honestly though, it's not the thing that I'm most excited to show you from this shipment. The next is, let's get to it. So for the grand finale of our video today, this is what we have. It's a red ball anemone or Pseudocornactis. Pseudocornactis are a type of coralomorph, meaning that they're related closely to mushroom corals. But as you can see, they look a lot like an anemone. And that's where you get the name red ball anemone from. Uh, this guy is incredible. A lot of times when I have fish and stuff like that in the store, I say that I've rarely seen them available. Uh, that means that a handful of times per year, I may see them pop up on a wholesale list. This guy, I absolutely mean it when I say that I have never seen one like it available. Uh, I had to get him. This guy is non-photosynthetic, meaning that he's not going to live off of just the lice in your tank, and also that he's predatory. This guy gets all of his nutrition from uh, things that he can catch and eat. And if you don't keep him well-fed or you keep him with too small a fish, that absolutely means you're fish. So this isn't for every tank by any means. And also, it's not exactly for sale yet. If you came at me with a really, really strong offer, I'd probably have to part with it. But the truth of the matter is we're going to feed this guy, see how big we can grow him, and then see about cutting him and making him into more. Uh, something like this absolutely deserves intense propagation effort, uh, and that's what we're going to give it. So this is not the last that you're going to see of this guy on our videos. It's going to be featured here on the channel plenty as we grow it out and see what we can do with it. Uh, hopefully that's exciting. Again, we're going to leave, put the fish for our clients into their tanks that we're bringing to them, come back and see how this stuff is all settled in. We'll splice that onto the end of the video and give you some nice eye candy to look at, and that's how we'll end it.